Okay, this week uh, we're going to do a lab experiment where you use the scientific method to design an experiment to determine the effectiveness of hand soap versus hand sanitizer, the alcohol gel. The first thing you're going to have to do is prepare some agar plates. So in your box, I want you to take out one tube of agar. You have two tubes of agar in your box, just use one of them. And also the tube of TSB. Empty the contents of those tubes into some kind of cup that is microwavable safe. So make sure you get all of, all of the powder out. Now to that cup, you're going to add a quarter of a cup of water. That's two ounces of water. So a quarter of a cup of water. Mix up the mixture. The powder is not going to dissolve until you microwave it. So give it a mix up with a spoon and then put it into the microwave and you're going to have to microwave, uh, mix, microwave, mix, microwave, mix until you get to a point where there are no chunky bits floating around. So if, if Aaron tilts that into the camera, we can see that the liquid is perfectly clear. It's kind of a yellowish color, but there's no floaty bits. If you've got floaty bits, you have to continue microwaving and mixing. Take two of your Petri dishes. Remember, your Petri dishes are sterile, so don't open these until you, you need to. And if you look at your Petri dishes, you'll see that there is a deep side and a shallow side. So there's a bottom and there's a lid. You're going to divide your agar, your hot agar, between two Petri dishes as evenly as you can. So pour the agar in, remember there's no floaty bits, half into one Petri dish, and then the other half into the other. Try not to get bubbles. If you do get bubbles, you can actually get rid of the bubbles by taking a match to the bubbles. So you might want to have matches handy before you do this as well. The agar won't set super quickly, so you don't, you don't have to be in a big hurry. And if you need to go back and put a little bit more agar in the first one, then that's fine too. Just make sure you replace the lid as quickly as possible. Once you have done that, it's probably going to take about 20 minutes for the agar to set. So we're just going to push those off to one side and show you a plate that we prepared earlier. Now, this agar plate was prepared earlier and you can see that it is set perfectly. If Aaron taps it, you'll see that it's just like a very firm jello. It kind of wiggles a little bit, but not very much. Now, one trick, once your plates are set, you're actually going to store them in an inverted position. So you're actually going to turn them over so the agar is at the top and the lid is at the bottom. And that's so that any liquid, any moisture on the lid does not drop into the agar. So that's how you're going to store them before you need them. Now for this experiment, you're going to design within your group exactly how you want to do this. But we just want to show you one, one method that you could use. If you choose to, you could divide your Petri dish into um, halves or even quarters and do different tests on the different quarters. Just make sure that you use a Sharpie on the side of the Petri dish that has the agar in it and that you label appropriately what each uh, sample is. And so maybe you choose to divide your plate in half and you choose to um, put your dirty fingers on one side and then your clean fingers on the other side. So you can see Aaron is labeling the plates. And so now, opening up the Petri dish, you can place your fingers firmly on one side of the dish. This will be your dirty side. One finger or two fingers. You want to place them fairly firmly, but don't, don't jab it in too deeply. Okay, take it off. Now perhaps, and this is going to vary according to your group, what you decide to do, perhaps you now want to go away and wash your hands. Make sure you dry your hands carefully. And again, that's going to be a choice as to how you decide to dry your hands. And then place your dry fingers on the other side of the plate, but using the same technique as before. So if you used one finger in the first plate, use two fingers, uh, uh, use, sorry, use the same uh, technique as you did the first time. 
You then want to put your petri dish off. Remember, it's going to be inverted, so the agar is at the top. You're going to put that off to a fairly warm place overnight, maybe for 18 hours. Now, if we look at a petri dish that has bacteria on it, what you should see after a day or a day and a half is you will see these individual things we call colonies. And if Aaron holds these up, you can see they're just like little dots. Each place where one of those dots is, is where one original bacteria landed on the petri dish. So in fact, if you want to count how many bacteria were on your fingers, you would end up counting the colonies because each colony is many millions of bacteria, but they all originated from the one original one that was on your fingers. So you'll have something that looks like that, okay? Now just, just warning, obviously these are bacteria that have been on your fingers, but now once you've grown them on a plate, you actually have sort of larger quantities of them. So you don't want to be eating them or getting them, um, you know, getting your children or your pets into these colonies, what I suggest you do when you're finished with your experiment is you actually um, scrape out the agar into a little container with some bleach in it, and some bleach water. Rinse out the petri dishes. We are going to reuse petri dishes later for a different experiment. So clean out the agar, a little bit of bleach, then it can just go in the trash, rinse out your petri dishes, dry them, and we'll use those later. Okay, good luck with your experiment.